in the end. Let's begin with what is AMC-8 and where does it lie within the realm of US math competitions? So some of you guys might've already seen this before who've attended the webinars, uh, but AMC-8 is actually for all students that are grade eight or below. So the common misconception is that you only have to be at grade eight. That is not true. I think Academy itself, for example, we have grade five students not only giving it, but also getting gold medals in this competition, a distinction on a role in this competition, right? So at the base of the pyramid, you see AMC-8. That is typically the first competition that you have in the US recognized math competition track. There's a lot of other math competitions. These are the best ones uh, because this is looking at it from the perspective of college admissions and high school, competitive high school admissions. This is the most recognized nationally. So AMC-8, is good because it's the starting point and cultivates a good good foundation and as well as interest in math competitions. It's of course very helpful if you do well on AMC-8, then if you're looking at competitive high schools, if you do well, this is a huge, huge plus on your application. It's gonna be a metric that is certainly gonna basically make your application. AMC-10 and 12 is the next one. So for below 10th graders and for below 12th graders. Uh, the way it works in terms of scoring is for AMC 10 and 12, uh, for AMC 10, top two or 5% of the AMC 10 community or top 5% of the AMC 12 community, which is around 100. If they are in that category, then they'll be qualified. Again, you have to be qualified. You cannot just attend for AIME. That's the next one, right? You have to be qualified by doing really well on AMC 10 and 12 to be qualified into AIME. AIME is great because you can actually look at it strategically. Uh, you don't actually have to get a perfect score on AIME. You can just strategize and get greater than or equal to seven out of 15. 15 is the total score in order for you to get the college uh, recognition, right? Uh, as long as you get more than seven, then you're gonna be doing wonders for your application, which is pretty amazing. And also goes to show that the exam is very difficult. Then you have the USAMO, which is again, based on qualification from Amy. It is national. And this, you'll be representing yourself against the most, uh, the top talent in the nation in mathematics. And finally, if you do well on that, then you'll be selected by the country to represent the United States. Um, you have to be a US national for this. Uh, the student has to be. And then you'll be representing the United States at an international level. If you even make it to the IMO, you're basically set in terms of college admissions into the Ivy Leagues. Uh, we have some pretty damning data to show that people who do well on the IMO at least, or even USAMO or even AMI, have a very, very good chance to differentiate themselves in the academic bucket. If you've attended my webinars before, there's three buckets, the academic bucket, the extracurriculars, and the leadership bucket. If you do well on these, your academic bucket will be in a great, great shape. This is also assuming that you're already doing well at school, which is what most top applicants will be. So this is the best way to differentiate yourself. Now, when we get into the details of the test is as follows. You can take a picture if you want. These are the logistics of the test. For AMC 8, 25 questions, multiple choice, 40 minutes, full score is 25 points. Uh, the scoring is one point for a correct answer. Registration requirements, you have to be at eighth grade or below, and you have to be greater than or, uh, or equal to 14 and a half years old. The com competition date is for 2022, it's uh, January 18th, 8 a.m. And also uh, we will have it, uh, that's, that's the competition date. You can take it within a window. So you can take it from there on all the way up to January 24th. Uh, at a minute before midnight. So two main things that you should take away from this is that if you've done Math Kangaroo, you will notice it's a little different, right? Um, what is similar is that the questions do increase progressively in difficulty. However, each question is weighted the same. So logically, you should think that your aim should be to treat each, each question equally, right? With respect First question to the end. Every question is going to give you the same points. So you need to ace the easy questions and medium difficulty questions. Your goal shouldn't be, oh, let me break the hardest one. You might get uh, a bit of self-confidence from that. And that's, that's great that you can do that. But if you're just thinking it from a testing perspective, 
You need to make sure you're acing all of the easy ones and all the medium difficulty ones to even be considered in a um, in a solid score, right? That's that's usually what happens. They usually get all of the easy questions correct. For AMC 10 and 12, even though today's webinar is not focused on that, it is quite similar in terms of logistics. You can take a picture of it. As I said, if you wanna advance into AI me, uh, Amy, you need to get the top 2.5% before AMC 10 or 5% before AMC 12. So Amy is qualification that is based off your performance in AMC 10 or AMC 12. AMC 8 is separate from all of them. They're, it's not connected, but I do recommend if you're taking math competitions seriously or you think this is a great extracurricular activity, then you need, need to take the AMC 8. That serves as your basis. Um, you might be thinking, how is this extracurricular activity, Zubin? This is mathematics, as with every other thing that you talk about regarding mathematics. Well, competitions, fortunately, will be classified as extracurriculars, right? Uh, so it does help a lot. And it's a good way to save time, right? If you're already doing brilliant in math, then instead of, say, focusing three years on rowing, uh, which you should do, which you should also have other normal extracurriculars that you're doing well in, but it saves time in that if you're already doing well at math, you should go on for competitions because it saves time and it carries great respect in two buckets, academic bucket, as well as your extracurricular bucket. Now, let's go on to how the awards are done. You have three different awards, distinguished honor roll, honor roll, and achievement roll. Distinguished honor roll would be the top 2%. The honor roll would be the top 5%. And the achievement roll is a very, very special. Because say you are a young kid, of course, at a fifth grade level, you are not expected to do excellent at this competition, right? Even though you should be attempting it. But there is some sort of recognition for that, right? Say you get 15 points or more out of the 25 and you are a young kid, a fifth grader. Then for certain aged kids, you will be qualified for the achievement role, which is amazing for a young kid. The achievement role, there's only eight in the world, for example, for last year. And I'm actually really proud to say that uh, Think Academy has four of those eight. Um, and the youngest student in the world to get this award was also from Think Academy at grade one. So it is quite wonderful uh, if you can crack uh, this particular achievement because it, it can go a long way, a long, long way. Okay, now let's look at the detailed analysis of the past performance. This is all of AMC 8. And over here, you've shown different metrics. The most important ones I will highlight myself. When you look at the top 1% scoring, which is the distinguished honor roll, not the top 2%, apologies. Uh, it is the top 1%. You will see that if you want to make the top 1% out of 25 total points, you need to get 21 or more generally speaking. Each year it's a little different, but uh, overall it is uh, breaking the 20, 21 uh, window. Now, top 5%, you need to break 18. Uh, and one thing that you might be noticing is that the uh, participation by total schools has reduced over the years. When you took a look at 2010, it increased from 2,000 schools all the way to 2015, where it became 2,500 schools but then it's reduced to 1,400 schools last year. Can anyone guess why? Let's see. Why don't you put in the chat? Let's see who's got the correct guess. I'll give you a hint. It is the reason for everyone's problems nowadays. And uh, also it is the best excuse for everyone nowadays. Both things can be true. Any guesses? COVID, very good. <laughs> COVID, of course, with the... Uh, uh, schools being at halt and so many logistical issues happening, the participation by schools has gone down. Um, but the, I would say the weight of the examination has stayed the same. If you look at the college admissions data for who took the AMC a series in um, and showcased that in their 2020 admissions. So the, uh, the weight or the importance of the test is uh, unwavered. It's still the same. 